Hello everyone, my name is Finley and welcome back to another X-Plane 11 tutorial. Today we are in the wonderful freeware Gulfstream 4 SP sitting on the ramp at Signature East at Van Nuys. Today I'm going to walk you guys through how to do a full startup as well as how to program the FMS. Uh, we're going to be doing a flight from Van Nuys in Southern California up to Boeing Field in Seattle. So with that, let's get in the airplane. And we'll go ahead and take a left into the flight deck. We'll go ahead and close the door behind us. And we'll go ahead and have a seat in the captain's seat. All right, so we'll go ahead and bring up our checklist here. The doors are closed. Uh, we just got it behind us. The parking brake is set. When, when the parking brake is rotated 90 degrees to the left, that means that the parking brake is on, uh, fuel is on board, and we're balanced. Pre-start checklist, we'll go to the overhead panel, and we're looking for the batteries. So we'll go to electric master, batteries one and two on. We can hear the engine start to come. We can turn them on. We can hear the airplane start to come to life. Next, we'll go uh, nav lights on. That just lets ever know that we have power to the airplane and APU master switch. So we'll come up to the APU panel here. So we'll come up to the APU panel here and go and turn on the APU master. This opens up the door for the APU and uh, gets it ready to start. And we'll go ahead and press the start button. We can see our EGT exhaust gas temperature start to climb and our engine RPM our rotations per minute start to climb, and once that gets to 100% and stabilized, we'll go and turn on the avionics. There's 100% RPM. We can see we have a good green light. We'll go come down here and go to aux power. We'll go and turn that on, and aux power. We'll go and turn that on, and we can go to our displays. Once we click one of them, they'll come on, and now we have our displays. Now, me personally, I don't like having all of the waypoints and everything up, so what I like to do is just come over here. All I want is my uh, weather and TCAS um, on, so that way the screen is more clear and it's just my waypoints. So, displays and radios are on. FMS, we'll go ahead and get taken care of this now. The FMS, for a lot of people, is super complex, and it's like, okay, I don't want to do this, I'll just fly visually. But the FMS, especially with the default airplane, is really not that bad. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and so. So first of all, we'll go ahead and click status. We can see we have the current AIRAC, and we'll go to flight plan. So we're starting off at Van Nuys K V N Y, and we're going to Boeing Field, which is K B F I. Alright, we'll leave the flight number blank, but we'll go ahead and get to our legs. So, I have already got a flight plan that I use, Sky Vector, and I'll show you guys how to use that. I've already got a flight plan in, and now we'll go ahead and get started here. So, we're not going to bother with flight number, so we'll go straight to the Departures and Arrivals page. We'll go ahead and depart Van Nuys, departing off of runway 16 right and we're doing the walker for departure and you just go up and down with these uh, buttons here castro transition and we'll go ahead and execute that now we can see our legs parry vector and then on and then the castro transition so we'll go back to flight plan and we can see we're doing two walker via the walker for departure and then the transition walker for Castro to Castro. Now from Castro we're going to the Mustang VOR which is FMG and we'll put that on the right side. With this with all FMCs on the right is the waypoint on the left is the airway and in this is in this case since we're just going direct from Castro to Mustang and there's no airway in between we just have direct. So from Mustang, we pick up the Juliet 5 airway, which we'll put on the left. And then you can see there's DISCON. So DISCON stands for discontinuity because the airplane knows 
we're going from Mustang to Juliet 5. Juliet 5 is an airway, and airways are basically like highways in the sky. So it knows that we want to get on the highway, but it has no idea what exit we want to take. And in this case, we want to get off at Lakeview, which is LKV. LKV. We'll go ahead and put that in the discontinuity and execute it. And there we can see there's no more discontinuity. Now, from Lakeview, we're getting on a different airway. We're getting on Juliet 67. Juliet 67. Again, discontinuity. Uh, we're going to Battleground Bravo Tango Golf. And from Battleground, we'll go back to the departures and the arrivals. We're doing the Olympia 2 transition and we're going to be landing on runway 14 right into Seattle. So Olympia 2, 14 right, we'll go ahead and select that via battleground and we'll select the approach once you get a little bit closer. So we'll go ahead and execute that and we'll go ahead and check the flight plan. So we'll go to the legs page. Again, we already have the departure in there. And here's a small problem. So a discontinuity in the FMC is basically where an, the computer is confused about where it wants to go. So basically, if the waypoints don't link up properly and there's no match, it'll go, hey, you know, there's nothing similar in here, where do I go? So in this case, to just clear the discontinuity, we're going direct from Lakeview to Battleground. So what we're going to go ahead and do is copy Battleground. We're just going to click on Battleground. And then this down below here where Battleground is, is called the Scratch Pad. So we'll go and copy Battleground to the Scratch Pad. And we can see our discontinuity. All we have to do is paste Battleground in there and execute it. And now we can see that that is clear. And just scrolling through, uh, we have no more discontinuity. So now we'll go ahead and set up the flight plan. So all I do is go and hit Cruise. And right now... We have no cruise altitude, which means when we go to our legs page, we don't have any altitude or speed or anything in here. So we're just going to go to cruise. We're cruising at flight level 410. Flight level 410. And then that's for the departure. That's fine. We can just go ahead and clear that. And that's on the descent. That's all right. And we'll go ahead and select the target speed. We're going to do Mach 0.88 today. So we'll go and slash 0.88 target speed enter and now when we go to our um, legs we can see Mach 0 0.80 flight level 410 and then we have our full descent and the departure chart says that the top altitude for the departure is flight level 230 so we'll go ahead and set flight level 230 in the autopilot panel and now uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the departure chart again. We're departing off of runway 16 right, so we're going to be at climbing on heading 164. 164. So that's set. That's runway heading. That's a magnetic heading uh, for the 16 right runway. So that's all set. Autopilot is set. Transponder. Uh, we can go ahead and set. 2000. We'll go and turn that to standby and squawk 2000. Radios are set. Cabin altitude is set. You don't need to adjust it in this airplane. And we'll go ahead and get ready with the start checklist. So for the start checklist, uh, we're going to run it from the top. Fuel pumps are just under the fuel system here. We can see they're both off right now. We'll just go ahead and click it once and click them in the fuel pumps are on if the lights are off that means that the fuel pumps are on start master will go into the engine start and master start is on we'll go and get the beacon on which is a flashing red light on the exterior of the airplane that lets everyone know that we're about to start our engines and we'll go for the right engine start so we'll go ahead and hold it there we can see right air start ignition and we're looking at the HP right now. We're looking for 15%. There it is. And we'll go ahead and introduce fuel just by clicking this yellow knob. And we're just monitoring the engine, making sure that we don't over temp. And that's a good start. We can see that we're stabilized. Our fuel flow is stabilized. And we'll go ahead and get the left engine started now. So we'll go ahead and click the left one. Again, we're still looking for 
There's 15. There's light off. Fuel flow is coming up. Starter is disengaged. And the engine is stable. Alright, the engines are stabilized, which means we can go and get the left and right generators on. I'm going to turn on the master cabin and galley power. And auxiliary power, since we have both the engines started, we do not need the APU, so we can go and turn off the APU master. And we can see the airplane start to uh, shut off the auxiliary power unit. Start master can now come off, and any ice... Oh, we're just going to get this entire panel on. Alright, after start checklist, cal any ice is not required. Ground spoilers are armed. We're just going to come just below the fuel uh, shutoffs and just flick, flick that to armed. Transponder, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and tune that to T-A-R-A. -A. Flaps, stabs, and trims, we'll go ahead and set flaps 10 for departure. Crew briefing, we'll get that on the roll. Overhead panel is checked, we'll go and get the taxi light on. And wing in as is not required. All right, I'll see you guys at the runway. And we're back in the cockpit, lined up on runway 16 right, and we'll go ahead and get started on the before takeoff checklist. Seatbelts are on, ignition, all we're gonna have to do is make sure that the left air start ignition, right air start ignition are both on and illuminated. Strobe lights are on, transponder is already on, we got that before we started taxiing, ground spoilers are checked and laning lights can come on. Alright, the before takeoff checklist has been completed, we're all set to go. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.